We just went back to the old version of Ustream and it seems to be working, I guess. Don't touch that. You're ruining everything. So, um... Uh, <laughs> Do you ever just sometimes feel like... Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to quickly get through what we went through and you didn't hear before. Um, we're here with Bruce Hart, um, the lovable yet hateable um, Nelson Van Eddy. Uh, he's probably ready to kill me after all these technical snafus. You know, I was waiting for this to happen. I knew sooner or later this was going to happen. And of course, it did when I'm flying solo tech wise. But here we are now. Anyway, I want to remind you that on our website, on our merchandise page, you know, where we have the fabulous Old Dogs mugs and water bottles, we've got canvas bags, we have the um, Tom Beard's autographed book. Anyway, well, that doesn't apply to this, but anyway, when we start season two, we're going to be trading out all of the merchandise and replacing it with merchandise with the season two graphic. So these will be going bye-bye in the next couple months, and I won't be as, you know, so presumptuous to say they'll be collector's items, but you never know. So if you don't have one yet, you might want to get on that end and pick one up. Um, looking forward to talking to Bruce. We have a lot of questions that were actually sent in advance. I think we may have our largest audience tonight if I didn't scare them all away with the tech stuff. Uh, so I'll let you know next week uh, we'll be back on next Wednesday with Ryland Shelton and hopefully this won't happen again. The mysterious Damian Jones. And uh, we start shooting season two on October 6th. Shooting through October 28th. Ten new episodes which will debut in January. And um uh, also, want to remind you, and we'll be talking about this a little bit later. Uh, but this is the DVD auction. The God, I love you, Jason. He, I, he's, he's, I can't believe he's handling all these details. It's uh, lots of DVDs. But uh, Bruce's auction is going on now through Sunday night, I believe. You can get autographed copies of Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. I don't know if you can see that. There's a lot of reflection. No, you can't see that at all. There you go. And his very own home record which we'll also be talking about tonight. Um, we also have a little contest we're going to announce a winner to. Eventually they will get an autographed copy of the player. What does Nelson and Nathan have in their office that would surprise you? Okay, I'm done. Okay. Finally. So we're going to bring out the lovable Bruce Hart. He plays Nelson Van Eddy. He's the star of Homewrecker. He's in a new film called Saltwater, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just figured I'd blank out on that after been rehearsing it all day. So without further ado, like I haven't ado enough, Bruce Hart. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all for sticking with us. <laughs> These little technical things happen. Don't you always feel technologically challenged by social media? Mm -hmm. Liam, thank you for that introduction. Wow. Oh, I have to talk a little bit more about Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. I just absolutely love that movie. I was obsessed with it. I dragged all my friends to it. I followed it around until it went to the, the $2 movie theater. When it finally went to DVD, I bought a copy. Hmm. I love it. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's a really good feel good movie. It's about these, these, these women that um, want to go to their high school reunion and wow everybody and they haven't really felt like they've done a lot with their lives and I could totally oh, relate yeah. to it. <laughs> um, I'm going to step out for a minute and let Lawrence if you need to repeat. These are questions that were sent in earlier and um, or you can ask from there. The questions confuse me so I'm That's not sure I'm going to be able to answer yeah. these very articulate. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I've got to go have a cigarette, folks, because I'm like, Ugh, as you can imagine. Lawrence is going to take over for a few minutes okay. and answer your questions, but I'll be right back. Here's the first question for Bruce. First of all, hi, everyone. Here's the first question for Bruce. Do you enjoy playing hero roles or villains, such as Nelson Van Eddy? Oh, that's such a loaded question. <laughs> um, actually, I, I, I like playing both, but right now I'm just loving playing uh, Nelson Van Eddy because he's, he's, he's not just a villain, he's a real bitch. And um, I've never had a, an opportunity to play a role like that. So when I was uh, meeting with uh, Leon and Lawrence about the series and they, they approached me about it, they're kind of like, well, do you want to play this bitchy character? And I'm like, yes, God, yes. Because usually I either play uh, nice characters or neurotic characters that have some like personal flaw and end up dead. So um, Nelson, he has it all. He's got money. He's got power. He's got a great facelift. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, what, what is the most scandalous thing your character might be involved in this year? Oh, uh, also uh, say the email address of who asked the question. Oh, and that question was from... Ken B at Pac Bell. Oh, 
Yeah, kenbeatpacbell.net. One well, of the questions we got submitted. Well, Ken B, thank you for that wonderful question. And the question was, what is the most scandalous thing your character might be involved with this season? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm an actor. I'm waiting to get the scripts, but I'm assuming he'll be causing some trouble, and most likely my character Nelson will be tormenting Nathan because that's what I live for. You know, Nathan. <laughs> so I'm excited. I, I, I think I'm going to be back. You know what a recurring character is, right? I, I'm, I pop in just to cause trouble, and then I pop out. So I'm, I'm hoping to pop in a lot this season. And you do that well. Julie says you do that well. Thank you. I'm enjoying popping in and out. I was telling a friend, they were asking me, well, what is a recurring character? And I'm like, you don't know what a recurring character is? And I said, it's kind of like Louise Tate on Bewitched, you know? Every time there's a dinner party and Larry needs to go to, Larry Tate needs to go to it, his wife is there. Except I don't have a, a husband or a wife, so I'm, but yeah, you kind of get the, the comparison, right? The person I was telling it to was 20 years old and they'd never seen Bewitched, so it was a big wasted explanation. <laughs> um, well, you have a question, another question sent in. Oh, okay. Um, I'm scared of these questions, you know? If you had not chosen to become an actor, what other occupation would you have chosen? Well, that's obvious, a, a brain surgeon. Because I'm, I'm really interested in how people tick, and I'd love to open up people's heads and find out what's going on in there, because there's... Especially nowadays, if you look at the political scene, and I'm not going to get political tonight, there's a lot of crazy people out there thinking that they can be president of the United States, you know? Um, seriously, no, I don't know. I actually didn't even want to be an actor. Um, I moved to Los Angeles because I wanted to get out of Michigan, and it was always sunny, and at the time it was a great place to live in terms of the economy. And I had sort of a, an idea of doing cartoon voices. And then somehow or other, I just sort of fell into this this acting thing in front of the camera. I kind of have a funny voice, you know. I, I think I would be good doing cartoon voices, but so far I, I haven't done any. <laughs> so what else do we have? Come on, folks. Let's get. I mean, I, I have so I have more questions that that. Okay, Julie. In the meantime, Julie wants to know who let me show you your this who was your first role model. Display the cup while you're answering the question. My first role model. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. Lillian Russell. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> he said Lillian Russell. Not funny. Um, you know, my first role model was a teacher named uh, Michael Parrish who taught our, our film class when I was in junior high school. And um, he's the first guy that ever actually gave me encouragement that, you know, it's okay to want to be artistic. It's okay to want to do things with movies. And um, he really made me feel comfortable about just being who I am and, and pursuing artistic endeavors. And um, I, I, I still think back on him and, um, you know, with a great deal of affection because the man really taught me a lot about filmmaking and just about the whole idea of just embracing who you are. That was seventh grade. So I'm still carrying it with me. <laughs> um, other role models, of course, are um, any bitch that you see on television. <laughs> Early on, of course, I was a worshiper of Joan Crawford. Um, you know, just Joan was Joan had more balls than most of the men she made movies with. So, there's that. I think I've answered that question. Have I answered that question? Fully. Uh, Amanda, fully. Amanda fully. Abel, uh, the lovely Amanda, Lydia Lasker. Oh no, she's gonna torture me. Okay, uh, would I like to know. Did you ever wonder what the double mint twins were like in bed? <laughs> No, but oh my god, the double mint twins, we used to make fun of them. My brother and I used to like, when they'd come on television, we'd sing along with them and make fun of them because we thought they were idiots. <laughs> we got sent to our room one time by my mom because she said, don't, don't, they're ladies, go to your room. I, I, I don't know what, what she meant by that, but the double mint twins having sex? <laughs> Are we allowed to talk about that on here? Sure. Uh, this uh, is, uh, uh, this oh, is uh, okay. internet, you can swear. By the way, I just think Amanda's brilliant and talented. I caught her her show, and she was just phenomenal. So, were you a cat? Uh, Katie, Trick would like to know: Were you a wallflower in high school or a class clown in standout? Interesting question. Um, and she says, by the way, the Double Moon Twins had the worst clothes. <laughs> well, it was the '60s. They had bad hair too. If we're talking about the ones from the '60s, because I remember them. Um, I would say that I was pretty shy. Um, it wasn't until like I was talking about junior high school that I started doing a little bit of acting and getting more involved like in filmmaking and things like that. So um, I need to, 
be really clear about this though. Being shy and maybe just kind of blending in back in the day when I was in school wasn't really a big deal. It was okay. Um, there, we didn't experience bullying, any of the stuff that these poor kids are going through today. It was okay to be different. Uh, a popular Facebook question, boxers or briefs? Uh, boxers. Absolutely boxers. Briefs? My, all right, I'll just say this, okay, and it might be TMI. When you get to be a certain age, briefs kind of like, well, you know, your balls, they kind of descend. <laughs> yeah. And, um, briefs kind of like bind them up and it's very uncomfortable. So, um, boxers kind of let you have a little more room to breathe. You don't need that support? No. I don't like things flopping around. Really? I like to know where things are at all times. I kind of like it. It gives you a little <laughs> bit of a, I don't know, a little thrill when you're having a meeting or when you're walking around in front of the camera or... I, <laughs> I get off on it. So, you know, even as a kid, I guess I was a perv. Julie loves the do dog. That. She's hoping that we run for 10 years. She wants to know how many years are you willing to commit to old dogs in your trip? Well, as long as my face holds up, as, as, as long as possible. <laughs> yeah, thank God we've got surgeons out here for that. Um, I would love to see old dogs run for a long time, and I would love to see old dogs new tricks be a feature film. I really think there's a lot of material there, so I'm hoping that the film gods hear this and decide to make it into a film. Oh, you and me both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what's your, uh, Corey would like to know, what's your funniest childhood memory? Uh, oh, there's so many. Um, wow. I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, it's, it's, it wasn't funny at the time, but it's funny now. It's the time I decided I was going to steal something from Nugent Drugs. This is a little, you know, back in the day they had these little drug stores and they weren't chains and they had lunch counters and all that. There were these caramels and they were like in different colors and they were wrapped in silver and they were just tempting me and they were five cents. And I didn't have five cents because we, we weren't rich. So I decided I was going to wear my little parka with the pockets and I thought, I'm a kid, I can probably get away with this. So I stole these caramels, um, and I shoved them in my pocket, and I had this fantasy about chewing them and how great they were going to taste. So we get to the car, um, so I open the door, and I, I don't know if it was like me feeling guilty or what, but I reached out to open the door holding the caramels. So my mother made me take them in. She said, you're gonna have to go in, you're gonna have to tell the sales clerk that you stole these. And I'm thinking, shit, she's gonna go with me. And she said, I'm waiting out here. I'm like, ah, I totally got it covered. So I went in, <laughs> I held them up to the sales clerk, and I said, I found these. <laughs> and she said, were they on the floor? And I went, mm-hmm. <laughs> I just went out to the car, and I was fine. Hmm. Wow. So yeah. you're a good actor, even then. Uh, yeah, early Nelson Van Eddy, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> so your friend, Yvonne Florence, she's a childhood friend of yours. Um, she sent us a few questions. One of them is, what is the strength jet's flying over here? No, no, it's not an earthquake. Yvonne, before we have that question, I have to tell you about the Florence sisters, all right? Um, Yvonne and Julie. When I was in junior high school, they lived in our neighborhood. Yvonne and Julie were hot babes. They still are. And um, my friends Calvin and Steve were their respective boyfriends. And when you're in junior high, what, you're like 12 or 13, the big, this is very innocent time. What you would do is you would walk your young lady home. So uh, Steve walked Yvonne home, and Calvin would walk Julie home. And I didn't walk anybody home because I was hoping one of the football players would walk me home. <laughs> anyway, I love Yvonne. So, but <laughs> hopefully her question is tasteful. Well, um, for the most, yeah, they are. Oh. Um, she has several. Here's one. If you could choose, what three actors would you really want to work with? Uh, Colin Farrell, because I'd really like to have a passionate love scene with him because I think he's really hot, mm -hmm. which is a terrible answer, but it's true. Um, and I have to digress. There's this, on IMDb, there's this um, list of like top favorite actors, gay or homoerotic, and Colin Farrell's at the top of the list. It's 38 actors, and I'm number 37. Really? I actually made the list, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm in good company. I'm almost up there with uh, Colin Farrell. Uh -huh. So, uh, what was the rest of that question? Um, the three actors that you'd like to work with. So oh, okay, Colin Farrell. I'd like to work with Tom Sizemore from Saving Private Ryan. Really? Scary. I actually went to college with uh, Tom uh, really? Sizemore. Yeah. And um, I think he's a brilliant actor and he's, you know, had some tough times and you know, he's gone the, the Lindsay Lohan route of drugs and arrests and things, but I, I, I think he's a really talented actor. So I'd love to work with him. And it doesn't have to be men? No. Okay. So uh, um, an actress that I would love to work with is Faye Dunaway. Mm. Only just because of the scandal, and I know I probably couldn't talk to her about Mommy Dearest, but 
Just think about the fun afterwards we could talk about. I could say I actually did something with Mommy Dearest. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Corey, Colin Farrell did have a sex tape. Wow, oh, did he really? Yes, he did. I hear you didn't see it? Uh, no. I it, was, it was kind of I, sweet, I hear, as sex tapes go. I hear all these things about Colin Farrell, okay? I hear, like, he doesn't take a bath. And that he's like got a manly sense and things like that, and and none of it will deter me from working with Colin yeah. Farrell. Okay, I'm just I'm just saying, mm, until he tells me no. So Julie would like to know what you can tell us about Saltwater. Oh, Saltwater. Um, it was a fun film. It's an indie film, and it actually stars um, Ian Roberts from Australia. He was the rugby player that that came out a while back, and he has done a bunch of movies. Ian Roberts was in Superman Returns, for example. And the other uh, actor in it is Ronnie Kerr, who has in a, been in a bunch of films, including Vampire Boys. Actually, I think it's Vampire Boys 2, and um, Shut Up and Kiss Me. Anyway, I play the third character in it, and I'm kind of like um, a gay anti-mame, and I'm trying to get these two guys recently out of uh, the armed forces to get together and be partners, because I think that they would be you know, great boyfriends. It's, it's a comedy, but it's really tinged with drama. And um, one of the reasons I really wanted to do this film was because my character has such a story arc. So, it w and it's actually um, playing next week in um, uh, Palm Springs at one of the film festivals, so cool. quite, quite excited about that. Ian Roberts is wonderful. He's really, really tall, and he's got this low voice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, first day on the set, I said to him, I hope you don't uh, pick me up and throw me across the set like you did on Superman Returns. <laughs> he looked at me like, what? He's very cute. <laughs> very nice man. We should try to get him on the show in season three. Ooh, that would be wonderful, uh, yeah. Um, question from Catherine, Catherine Trick. Okay. Who is your biggest inspiration for your Nelson Van Eddy character? Well, first and foremost, I have to say my inspiration came from the script because if Liam hadn't written such great dialogue, I don't think I could have pulled it off. Oh, thank you. Um, when I first was approaching the character, I'm like, well, he's kind of an interloper, so I was patterning him after, again, Bewitched, um, Darren's girlfriend, Sheila. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if any of you remember her, but um, she's the one who would call Samantha Samsara and, and you know, and try to be a bitch and things like that. But as, as I worked through it, I started trending more towards Nellie Olson from Little House on the Prairie, you know. No, Laura Ingalls, you can't come to my party because you're just a country girl. And um, <laughs> I was channeling her for another reason because I, I actually, I got fired from play. I was doing... Um, uh, this mystery thing, and um, there was a scene in there where, as a man, I was dressed as Nellie Olson, and I was following the script, and I thought, oh, you know, wouldn't it be funny if I went off script? So <laughs> I said, no, Laura Ingalls, you can't come to my party because you're just a cunt, tree girl. <laughs> tree girl? <laughs> so, you know, getting the C word in there, right? Um, some people laughed. <laughs> <laughs> but the producers didn't think it was funny at all, so I got my walking papers that night. Oh my eh, god. Such is life, you know? Is that the only time you've been fired? No, I've been fired many times. <laughs> I got fired in high school from Baskin Robbins um, ah. for discovering that my boss was uh, cheating me on my paychecks. Um, <gasps> really? Yeah, you know, I mean, sometimes when you just stand up for what you believe in, sometimes it doesn't always 100% go your way. But what, what's that expression? Better a dead... No, that's not a good good expression. It's better a dead dog than a brave lion, but I don't agree with that expression. Oh, I don't either. No. So, there you have it. So we've had some talk that it's a little blurry, so all that jiggling, juggling is... No, no, blurry is good. We want blurry. We want fuzzy. What was that thing they said about Joan Crawford um, later in life? They said if you can't um, photograph Miss Crawford at the length of a football field with elaborate... Di elaborately diffused lighting, you better get the hell out of show business. <laughs> That's me, as Nelson Van Eddy. Do you have any pets? No, I do not, and I don't have real plants either. No pets, fake plants. Very good. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So, um, let's go to some of the questions we got in advance. <sighs> I'm scared of these questions. From Designs by Goatweed. Dyson at GoatWeed.com. Goatweed sounds like, like a stoner, doesn't Goat it? Goatweedy. Go weedy, it's e it is. Uh, ah. uh, Bruce, you've done several stage productions and movies for I you have. where you were required to get naked and do sex scenes with your co-stars. No, well... Oh sorry. my god. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> if the writers decided to steer your character into basic instinct territory, which of your uh. old dog's co-stars co would you mate with and then uh. kill? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. So we're talking about just the old dogs, right? Well, first off, I need to say this. I think all the old dogs are wonderful. 
So it would be very difficult to choose. Yeah, nothing like putting you on the spot in front. But I think there's there's two characters in particular that Nelson Van Andy might have either a Jones for or a desire to annihilate. First, of course, is, is Leon as Nathan, right? Because <laughs> there's obviously something there, although we don't know what, right? The other person, it's it's more subtle, but you know who who Nathan uh, who Nelson picks on is um, a David Pevsner's character, which is Ross Stein. There seems to be something there because he says, "Doesn't you didn't you used to be Ross Stein?" And um, I think maybe there might be an opportunity there for Nelson Van Eddy to drop kick Ross Stein. Who knows? Mm. Mm. That's true. He does always pick on Ross. Then again, you know, I think that um. Nelson just picks on everybody he can. Anybody he senses might be weak or needy or emotional. Mm. Mm. Katie says you have a great laugh. <laughs> I do? Thank you. Somebody told me I had him have an evil laugh. Mm, it could be interpreted on that way. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I have to tell the story real quick if we have time. Oh, yeah. uh, we went to see Amanda's show and she was brilliant. And um, the whole time I was obsessing because I had cut myself shaving and I was afraid everybody would think I had a cold sore. Anyway, so it's break time, right? We're out chit-chatting with Amanda, and some guy comes up to me, and he said, oh, he said, you're that bitchy guy on that uh, series. And I'm thinking, oh, he's expecting me to say something witty, have a witty rejoinder, and I look over, I'm like, uh, where's Leon? I need him to write something for me. So I said, well, you know, um, <clears throat> I'm not really like that character in real life. <laughs> Clunk. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm really not like Nelson, so it was oh. it was kind of I don't know, it was slightly embarrassing, and he just kind of like oh and left because I think he was expecting me to be something else. Hmm. Yeah, you're not you're not like him at all. No, I need I, I need your dialogue. I mean, yeah. you and I we've had coffee a few times, and you know we can we can. Uh, you're not, you're not, we you're all not like we all can go somewhere in terms of being bitchy, but in terms of being articulate and witty, you need you need a good scriptwriter such as yourself to, to be putting oh. those lines together. So, yeah. so write me something good for season two. Yeah. <laughs> um, Corey would like to know Facebook versus Twitter. What do you like more and why? Facebook. Why? Um, probably because I'm old, but um, I don't get Twitter. Twitter's like this abbreviated thing. It seems to me, for the most part. Twitter is just people saying, here's what I'm doing, here's what I'm doing, here's what I'm doing. And if you think back to, like, and I wasn't alive back then, the, the settler era, there was a, a schoolhouse concept called the Blab School, where everybody just talked and talked and talked. Um, that's what Twitter seems like to me. It's like a wall of noise. Versus at least with Facebook, you can pick and choose, you can watch videos, you can see pictures, and you can read things. I think Facebook is like the national inquirer for the average person. You know, everybody can be a star mm. for 10 to 15 minutes. Mm. I love Facebook. Mm. Um, a question from Hawaii Mike. This is one of the ones. Hawaii? I want to go to Hawaii this year. I, I, I go every year. This is the first year I haven't gone, and I, I'm going through withdrawal. And stuff. <coughs> every year? Oh, how fabulous. Yeah, I haven't gone in so long. Uh, we should go. When season two's over. We should film uh, an, an episode vacation. there. Old oh, dogs. sure. All dogs go to your a lot. Send your checks, Why Mike would like to know, do you prefer comedy to drama? Oh, that's a really good question. Because I, I, I do think about that a lot. And I've done both. Um, I think I do more comedy than drama. But I actually like both. And I, I know that's a real Pollyanna answer, but anytime I get an opportunity to do a dramatic role, and you know, I grab it and run with it, and I think Saltwater is like that. It's a little a mix of both, but it, it's far more dramatic than it is uh, comedic. <laughs> I like, Jason says if we do a show in Hawaii, we can find a tiki on the beach in the show. <laughs> <Do -do -do -do>. <laughs> <laughs> the curse of the tiki, what was that? Brady Bunch, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 Brady Bunch. We'd have to get, um, what's his face though, Vincent Price, and he's not around oh. anymore. Who could we get instead of Vincent Price? Let's think about this. Yeah, uh, Jim J. Bullock, maybe? He owes me a favor. Uh, he would be great. <laughs> I, I'm not making fun <laughs> of Jim J. I, I like Jim J. He's got more hair than I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Corey would like to know, do you like digital filming or the old school? We were just talking about this, actually. Do you like oh. digital filming or old school movie making with actual film? Oh, guys, that's such an easy one, a film. Film is such a happier medium. Um, it's more expensive, but it's more forgiving. I think people look more like they actually really look on film. Yeah. Um, when I first was acting, I did a bunch of stuff on 35 millimeter, and there's absolutely no comparison. Um, it takes longer to light, but people just look brilliant. It's, it's rich. You get all this depth of field, meaning things that are up front and things that are behind have clarity. Um, 
and old people don't look like hags. <laughs> you know? I, know, I just, it's, it's a drag. You There's can't count the fours. Totally. So, a question from Nikki Wall. At, uh, oh, Nikki. Nikki! Oh my Wall gosh! Wow. Com. You know, Nikki Wall, folks. Um, she's a producer in <coughs> her own right, but she's also married to a producer named Creep Creeperson, who's a horror movie producer. And um, I just worked for him. I did a, a, a mainstream film for uh, Redbox. You know those little uh, boxes that are outside of Seven yeah. Eleven. It's a contemporary retelling of Dracula. Fun. And um, Dracula is played by uh, Peter Stickles, who was in the movie Short Bus. So, I'm scared of her question. Uh, well, she has a couple. I'm trying to pick which one is. Ooh, Actually, I well. answered this question in an earlier chat, much mm. to my regret. Have you ever seen a UFO? I don't know. I've seen many things, particularly as a child, and I'm going to filibuster for a minute. I don't know about those of you who are out on the chat, but um, as a child, I always felt much more attuned to things that were spiritual. I would see things. I had imaginary friends. Um that just weren't something I was making up. I actually saw them. I don't know if I was disturbed as a child or not. So I, I, I actually do believe that other life forms exist. And I think when you're younger and you're more open, your receptors are more open, mm. you, you see them. And I, I, I firmly believe that we all have seen them at some point or another, but we forget. And mm. if anybody's read the Mary Poppins books, they actually do a whole number on that. They talk about how babies can talk to birds and babies can see these things all over the place. Mary Poppins can see them, but as, as the, the kids grow older, they can no longer talk to the birds, and then they, there's this whole chapter about how the birds are sad because they no longer can communicate with their friends who are these children. How sad. Corey would like to know, and I, I believe that too, Katie Andrews, uh, Corey would like to know, what's the most difficult part you've played? <coughs> wow. I'm thinking on that one because I've had a lot, <laughs> a lot lately. Um, actually... Just recently, um, I guessed in on a, another web series called Boys Town, and um, it was a role that required me to be 100% on, focus, to lead the scene, but the, the episode was actually about the young people, and I, I knew that going into it, so it was kind of like I, I could have thrown it away or I could have made it something compelling. So I had to work very hard to make sure that what I was doing to lead these youngsters, and I was playing a porn producer, it sounds uh, sleazier than it was, but what I had to do to lead them into the scene that we were doing was very important. And um, I got one of the greatest compliments from one of the younger actors afterwards. He said to me, you are so organized, you are so focused. He said I was scared, actually, because I was afraid I'd make a mistake because, you know, you were so spot on. And he said, and I think this is probably true and it sounds like I'm bragging, but he said every time we did a take or a pickup, you did everything exactly the same way. And what I wanted to say to him was, well, we're supposed to do that. <laughs> because the editor's going to go nuts if, if he or she can't match shot to shot. But I didn't. You are very good on set. I mean, you were... Uh, My, thank you. Very... Hopefully he's not watching this because he'll be insulted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, can I digress for a second? We're talking about film versus digital. And this really is kind of a lamentable trend. And it's nothing about the, just the shoot I was just on. But I'm seeing... Because digital, you can shoot over and over and over. You can do as many as you know, 40 takes because mm -hmm. there's no film to burn up. Um, we're getting a, a situation where actors are getting lazy. And they don't oh. feel like they always have to hit their marks. They don't feel like, oh, you know, I don't have to get it right this time. Because they'll piece it together. Yeah. Right, and it's really frustrating for actors that are like myself, like Joan Crawford, kind of old school. You know, I want to hit my mark and get it right every single time, but I don't want to do 40 takes, you know? So I'm... And Keanu Reeves says the same thing. He did an interview about this recently. He said digital has ushered in a whole era of people that are less buttoned up when they're on the set. Hmm. Thank you, Keanu. I agree. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can work together sometime. Or at least go out. A question from your friend Dylan Fox. From, um... Dylan? Oh, okay. Home record. Dylan, oh my gosh. Dylan Fox. He's going to hate me holding this up. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think we kind of froze. Oh. <laughs> Did we freeze? So hold on. Can we all see us now? Is it working? It's back. Okay, good. Dylan, I know you're going to hate me because I'm holding this cover up, and I know you hate the cover of Homewrecker, and so do I, but um, 
You're brilliant in this movie, and thank you for your question. Well, I'm actually, not I think it's questions to me. Oh. <laughs> to well, then screw him. <laughs> to producer, do you have this thing with porn? Porn? Hmm. Do you want me to answer that? Yes. Yeah. He's obsessed with porn. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is Dylan online? Um, the person asked this question said, I'm not Dylan, but then someone else said Dylan is here, so I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. Dylan, I don't think he's obsessed with porn at all, um, but I do think um, when you do a web series, particularly one where we're, we're talking about all genres, um, and, and you can interject at any point, Leanne, um, men of a certain age versus younger men, there's going to be an element of sexuality, and I'm going to tilt this a little bit because one of the things that I think is so cool about uh, Old Dogs and New Tricks is that it doesn't just focus on the youngsters having libidos and, and, and you know, the old people need to be like grandparents or these mm -hmm. weird weird figures. Um, what it does is it explores sexuality across the spectrum. And, you know, I'm of a certain age. I still feel sexy. I still date. I still go clubbing. I still get bitterly jealous of people. You know? <laughs> and um, we're going to see a big cat fight in season two, but I'm not going to give you any spoilers. So I guess what I'm saying is what's cool about it is it, it kind of says... You don't hang up your tap shoes when you, you cross the, the, the 40 threshold, you know, it, it, it continues on, you know, you continue to live, you continue to be a human being. Um, actually, it wasn't Dylan. It was actually... It was still a good answer. I think it's... It was a very good. <laughs> I think it's Jason. Um, he meant you because you've worked with Dylan mm -hmm. and now you're playing a porn producer in a show. Uh, well, I did a guest shot as a porn producer on, on another series, yes. Am I obsessed with porn? No, not at all. Actually, I, I'll be real honest with you guys, and then I want to change this stuff, but I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> um, I actually have never really cared for adult entertainment, as I like to refer to it. I think it's great. I'm not against it. It just doesn't do anything for me. I'm a, a, a real person. Um, I'm in the moment. I would much rather connect with somebody one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but thank you for your question. Julie says she's lost sound. If um, anyone else is having that problem, let me know. Oh, no, she just got a bad commercial. And Corey says that's a wonderful answer. <laughs> um, how is 40 for all of you? Jason would like to know. 40? Yeah, how is turning 40? Um, Can you remember that far back? Oh, I <laughs> knew he was going to say that. <laughs> um, 40 was great. Um, I like every... I, I love birthdays, okay? I have a big birthday bash every year. I had one this year, in fact. Um, mm. um, it was fine. I would say the only thing that I just have discovered as of late is, um, again, getting back to that how people perceive you. I, I went to my, my workout club, and um, some woman said to me, she said to me, are you a Republican? And I'm not going to get political tonight, I promise. And I'm like, why would you think I was a Republican? And she said, basically, well, because you're a male, because you're white, and what she really meant was I was over 40. And I said, just because somebody goes hits a certain, you know, uh, point in their life does not change who they are politically or otherwise, and I kind of educated, I, I was very nice, I did not do a Nelson Van Eddy, but I, mm -hmm. I, and I also made sure I was clear that it was okay to, to be on either side of the political spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, did I answer that question, or did I just babble? I think you answered it. <laughs> I like to talk, sorry. Um, Hawaii Mike again would like to know, Hawaii? any chance you'll put on any of your plays again? Oh, gosh. You know, I'd love to. Um, for those of you that are online, I produced plays for years, for almost 10 years. And I had a producing partner named Paul Vanderus, and we produced a ton of stuff, including a show that ran for three years called It Started With a Lie, um, which was really fun to do. It was just, it was so awesome. We had this show running, and, you know, all actors have day jobs, so we do our day job, and then we just, you know, drive to the theater and, and, and live this fantasy life. Um, yes. Absolutely. I'm actually working on a show right now that's a mainstream show. It's not a gay-themed show. It's a Streetcar Named Desire, you know, Tennessee Williams, and it's going to star Elaine Hendricks, who was in Romeo and Michelle, and she was also in the remake of The Parent Trap and, and many other things. Oh, she was? Yeah, yeah. She was? She was the evil stepmom. That's of, right. I think Elaine is just so talented, and she just did the show in, in another state, so we're going to bring it to L.A. I'm very excited about that. Katie says, speaking of workout club, you have great biceps. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> and Corey wants to know, have you been to Canada before? Corey, yes. I grew up in Michigan. I've been to Canada many, many, many times. Used to go there for theater. 
I'm trying to remember all the celebrities that I've seen in Canada because I mean, you know, they attract all the really talented stage actors. Uh, of course, I've been to Stratford. Mm -hmm. um, the answer is yes. One time I was there, I got to tell this really quick. I was there with a friend of mine, and she's kind of gauche. And we were in a restaurant, and they said it's going to be X amount of dollars for the, the bill. And she literally said this in American. She said, how much is, is that in real money? Oh, my God. I could have died, I'm oh telling you. You know, I'm like, God. sweet. Plus, Canadians, you know, the money in, in Canada is, is, is prettier. That is. I want to live in Canada. <coughs> um, Corey would like to know, are you political? Um, <coughs> When it counts, I'm, I'm certainly going to vote in the presidential election, and um, I'm certainly in favor of, of human rights, and I'm in favor of, um, you know, certain social issues, things like that. So I would say, yes, I'm less active politically than I have been. I, I donate money to, to causes that I think are important, and, you know, I get out there and I vote, which is what all Americans should do. Mm -hmm. yeah. We should do an election. You know, I'm really kind of annoyed that we're shooting right before the election yeah. and airing right after that we can't make fun or address that. I would love to get in some little digs there and, and not knowing who's going to actually be president when we air. Yeah, it's real interesting and I'm sure all the other countries are just looking at us and they're so amused right now about what's going on because, you know, we seem to just lately, I, you know, I'm so proud to be an American and I love my country, but it just seems like we're all on the Jerry Springer show when it comes to, to, to politics. Everybody's screaming and yelling, and we have all these network news channels that are not really news. It's, it's very embarrassing. So, um, if you, uh, who would you bump into that would make you starstruck, uh, other than Colin Farrell? Oh, uh, there's so many. Oh my God, I, I've got to tell you this. I did bump into Phyllis Diller. You know, she just recently passed away at the movie theater. I was totally starstruck because she sounds just like she did on to on television. Her laugh was the same. Um, I don't usually get starstruck, stu struck, um, but once in a while you you'll meet somebody where you feel like you've wandered into their close up, and it's a little, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit alarming. Um, I can't remember her name, but the actress who stars on Bones. I went to an event and she was there with her boyfriend. And I was right Emily next to her. Additional. That's her. Yes, Emily Additional. And behind her, her uh, was um, shoot from Taxi, Danny DeVito and his wife uh, Rhea Perlman. Yeah. And they were so nice. But again, I, I felt a little because they look, all of them look so much like they really look like on television, which isn't true for all celebrities. But I felt a little bit like I was standing in their their close up. Don't you always find them to be smaller than you expect them to be? Smaller and thinner. Yeah. Thinner. Yeah. Linda oh, Carter's the only one who was kind of bigger than I She's think. an Amazon. Sometimes you'll get on a set, and I'm not going to say which sets, but I've walked on a couple sets in, in recent years where I felt like I was an Amazon. And it's like the land of the midgets. Yeah. Everybody's are short. Yeah, the they are. The camera likes short, thin people. Yeah. Mm. Okay. We need to talk about the contest and pick a winner of um, the, um, the fabulous contest, <coughs> contest that Jason um, held for us. What's the strangest thing you would find in Nelson? or Nathan's office. <laughs> oh, I think it would be in Nathan's office. Nelson's too buttoned up. So um, we looked before the show, we looked through the submissions. If you want to look at them, you can go to our Facebook page, Facebook slash Old Dogs of Series, and click on Public Posts, which is at the top right of the timeline. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. really interesting ones. One from Julie that's so political and so absurd that I, I hesitate to even mention it. Whose office? Nelson, Nelson, or uh, Nathan, Nathan. Or Nathan's office. Okay, go ahead and talk about it. Nathan mm -hmm. would have a vote for Romney campaign sign. Uh, I can't see that happening. Not now. Not, uh, in, not in this universe. Um, and then a picture of a very cute little puppy dog. That huh. um, Nelson's career is not really thriving, and he's been moonlighting as a dog walker. This picture is on his desk. It's his favorite client and his own uh, client. That's cute. <laughs> and then Catherine Trick. I must confess, this is my favorite, just for shock value. Uh, a pen holder that you might find in Nelson's office. Oh, I saw that. That oh. was, I think that's my favorite. Catherine. Mm -mm -mm. And then another one from <laughs> Catherine, a very attractive photo of our future special guest star, Greg Luganis. Mm. Oh, you know, and that's a picture of him when he was younger, but Greg is a gorgeous man. Mm -hmm. I, I prefer the current edition of Greg, and I'm excited he's going to be on our set. You know, I can't wait to see what he's going to play. And then from Corey, <laughs> did you see that one? 
<laughs> it's, it's a target for, for Nelson Van Eddy's office with, with Nathan's face in the center. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I could see that. So the, um, I've got one in my house. <clears throat> Bruce's favorite answer will win a DVD of The Player signed by both Tim and myself. So which one do you like the best? Oh my god, the pressure's on the me? The pressure's on. I should have said names. Uh, I should have just... Okay. I have to decide uh, quickly, right? Honestly, is, is it going to be for Nelson's offense or Nathan's? It can be either one, whichever one is your favorite. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go with the target. It's Corey! Again, that's the target with um, Nathan Adler's face in the center. Think. That would so yeah. look great on, on Nelson's in, in uh, Nelson's office. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they can see it. Well, uh, hold it up. But you can sort of see it, right? <laughs> but I have to show the... Uh, the uh, this would be my second runner-up. This just <laughs> this is a pen holder that uh, Catherine Trick, Katie, sent in. I don't know if you can see it. There's also a video on our <laughs> Facebook page. It's uh, it's outrageous. <laughs> it's so whose office would that one be in? She says um, you might find it in Nelson's office. <laughs> uh, maybe in his private home office. <laughs> I don't know, Catherine. <laughs> I want to know where you got it, Catherine, because I, it, it, it's pretty cool. You're right, and you're right, Katie. It was an awesome idea, and we have Jason to thank. And, also, Jason, to thank for the DVD auctions and yeah, Jason and Cully for Jason all and yeah. Corey for just keeping us alive mm -hmm. on social media mm -hmm. while I uh, juggle a bunch of different things. And Don't you love shoes. social media? Oh, mm -hmm. I used to till I started doing it for a living. I shouldn't say that. Let's go back to a couple more. Um, we have more questions. A few more of the sent in advance questions. Okay. And then we can start uh, wrapping I'm it up. I'm scared, Christina. Hmm. Um, Nikki Wall again. Dun dun dun. I know. Hmm. If money were no object, where in the world would you go right this second and what would you do? Oh, I love wow. That question. Where would I go? Um, first off, I, I would like to go back to Europe because, you know, anywhere. I just like to tour around. I just It's a beautiful place and I'd like to go. So I'd like to do maybe a, 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 a world cruise. I know that sounds boring. What else would I like to do? I've got a gazillion billion film projects in the hopper, and, and some of my friends have some brilliant projects. I'd like to fund those. But first and foremost, of course, I'd like to fund a feature film of old dogs and music. Oh, good answer. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> uh, thanks, Nikki. That was a good question. <laughs> I don't know if she's watching. Is she online? Um, I don't know, because if uh, they she's don't have an account, it just doesn't Anonymous. A, a she said she was room. coming on, yeah. Um, is there any advanced questions? Let's see. Um, if not, I can certainly tap dance with the best of them. <laughs> I have a funny story to tell you. Actually, I was on an interview um, just a couple nights ago with my brother, and we were at Universal doing some stuff, and um, we were talking about how he and I used to make, I talked about that teacher that was very instrumental in my life. We used to make Super 8 movies, and we would do frame-by-frame -frame animation films with hand-painted wow. cells, yeah. But the part my brother, he said, don't tell, don't tell this, don't tell what I did anyway. We were a little timid. And when we went to buy our first movie camera, we had to go to the store and buy a Super 8, it was a Super 8 camera. And we went up to the counter and there was this woman with this really big bride of Frankenstein hair. We went up and said, we'd like to see this camera. She was just an unmitigated bitch. She was so rude to us. So of course we slunk away and, um, you know, didn't get the camera. And then we went and talked to our mom who had bigger balls than we did. My mother's like, what? She wouldn't wait on you just a minute. <laughs> she went back there and made things right. These boys might want to spend money. You know, oh, I want to speak to the manager. It was slightly embarrassing, but the sales clerk did get in trouble. And so in retrospect, that's funny. And we did end up buying the camera. So so now I've told that story on two interviews. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I miss Super 8 cameras. Me I too. I made a lot of movies on Super 8 I miss back, film, in, but back yeah. in the day. Hmm. Back in the day, Back I'm telling you. <laughs> they say Super 8 people go like, oh, video? That's so old fashioned. It's like no Super 8 film, baby. No, no, no. It's like this thing, you know, like you actually process the film. Hmm. I, know. I know. Film, not video. Although I can't complain. Hmm. Um, I'm loving the player. <laughs> um, from Hawaii Mike. A sequel to Homewrecker, perhaps? 
Oh, a sequel to Homewrecker. Homewrecker, this is the film. I'll hold it up again. Yeah, actually, we sort of have a contractual obligation to make a sequel to Homewrecker. And Yay! We've, we've been kicking it around quite a bit, and um, we're not quite there yet. We've got some funny ideas. The problem is is that the cast, Dylan, Peter, and Rebecca Cochen, who was in all the Eating Out movies, they're always working. So it's very hard to pull everyone together. Yeah. And I actually have a production company myself, and I'm involved with a new film project called um, Rule Number no. 7 that actually will reunite some of the Homewrecker cast. Um, Rebecca and Peter are going to be in it. Peter played my husband in Homewrecker. And um, it's a story about, it's a gay-themed film, it's a, a story about a couple that becomes dissatisfied with their relationship. They're married, and they decide they want to explore having an open relationship. It's a bit of a throwback to those um, 1960s comedies mm. like Debbie Ronald's Doris Day, those kind of things. So um, we're hoping to go into production with that in January. And we're hoping that we can get Leon on board for it, too. <laughs> oh, well, gee, twist my arm. I'm hoping. <laughs> so what's your favorite song? Um, hmm, I have so many. All right, anything classical, and I'm not going to name them all because I'll, I'll, I'll bore you to death. Um, I happen to really like retro disco, so... Oh, hey! I just had Donna Summer, what? and I, I know it's not PC to like Donna Summer, or maybe it's okay now. It's okay now. It's okay She's now, good. good. <laughs> I like Bad Girls, and I was cranking it when I was stuck in traffic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright, and here's the funny part. That whole album. Exactly, that whole... Album. Here's the funny part. We were stuck in... Uh, I was stuck in traffic, and um, I always think we, because I figure there's a crowd, right? Anyway, mm -hmm. I was doing Donna's part. And then it, it rolled over to, to the other one with Barbara Streisand where they sing Enough is Enough. And I was doing the Donna Summer part of Enough is Enough is Enough. And um, I realized there was a carload of guys to my left, gay guys. Uh. They, they were watching me. And they, when I was done, they clapped. Ah. <laughs> I just like pretended like I didn't see it. <laughs> That's funny. And, you know, you got to do something to pass the time when you're stuck uh, mm. on the freeway in L.A. So. <laughs> Julie wants to know, does that thing run in your family? Well, yes, actually. Um, um, I could go on and on. My, my oldest sister, who no longer acts, a Andrea, did, did a lot of theater when she was a kid. She was like a child actress. And um, my mother, of course, was an actress. Um, she comes from, a, my mother comes from a long line of, of actors. My younger sister actually is a, a phenomenal dancer, and she's formed a dance troupe. She lives in the Midwest for, for kids and now for young adults. And it's called the Blue Light Players, and it's it's just been doing uh, terrifically well. And of course, my brother and I have done you know theater and, and films forever. My brother Paul Hart, I don't know if you know him. He's a director and an editor. He's worked on the Spider-Man film series, the original one. Um, recently worked on the Oz movie that's coming out, things like that. Oh really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. And he also directed uh, a Homewrecker. So, yeah. So I would say yeah, oh, it does run in the family. Hmm. Is Michael? Um, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing this right. Michael Stassi in the sequel. Mike Stassi? Oh, there's a name I haven't heard in a while. I, well, I hope so. I hope everybody comes back for the sequel. Michael Stassi plays in Homewrecker the neighbor who runs kind of a, um, an erotic gear shop. And Dylan Vox's character at one point seduces him because he wants to get some information out of him. And there's this little sequence where they're in the bedroom, you know, oh, ah, oh. But it's. I tell people the movie is racy, but it's as tame as like a Jane Mansfield movie. It, it's all tease, you know? Mm -hmm. It's all, all in good fun, so. Uh, yes, Michael, if you're listening, yes, I hope so. Um, <laughs> Katie asks, what do you like to do for fun in your downtime? Oh, um, downtime, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> I was telling Liam I'm, I'm tired because I'm always doing so much. But in, in answer to your question, what do I like to do? I love to dance. Um, I absolutely love to go to the discos in L.A. Even at my age, I don't know. And there's uh -huh. one in particular, it's in the, the Notorious Valley. Oh. And if any of you have seen the Brady Bunch, that's where um, it takes place in the valley. Anyway, it's this big old disco from the 1970s. Mm -hmm. It has a huge dance floor, neon, and they still play vinyl. They play records. And um, it's just, it's a one, it's a religious experience. And it's called? Well, oh, Oil Can Harry's. Yep. Thank you. Um, what do you uh, Katie wants to know, what do you like to do for fun in your downtime? Didn't we just answer that? No. Oh, yeah. No, we dance. Well, you're right. Uh, but there's more to it. But wait, there's more. I'm also a prolific reader. I go to the, the library every Saturday, and I check out books. And I always check out a murder mystery, a biography, and some work of fiction. And people are just amazed at um, how quickly I can read and how fast I devour books. 
and I absolutely don't like online books. Do you read one after another? Do you like read part of one and then part of the other and then part of the third and then go back to the first one? A book little part? of both, and sometimes I'll reread books or just the sections that I liked. Yeah. If I really like a book, I buy it and I'll read those those little sections that um that, that I thought were cool or well written. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to get into the online book thing though. It just seems. I need pages. I can't do it. Yeah, me too. I'm you know, like school. Kurt doesn't even print out his script, he uses his iPod, and I, if I didn't have a paper script to like clutch and mm. crumple and roll up and Yeah, there's all this stuff mangle. you need to do, it's part of the process, crunkling your yeah, script, the nervous making notes, you yeah. know, spilling coffee on it, because I'm a heavy coffee drinker. What's your favorite book ever? Oh gosh, there's so many, I, I love so many different kinds of books. Anything by Helen Gurley Brown, Don't Laugh, I think she was a real leader for women, and it's unfortunate that she passed away, but she was in her 90s. Um, I love biographies. I mm -hmm. just read Jane Fonda's Primetime. It's very well written. The only thing that I think is laughable is Jane Fonda talks about retirement advice, how to invest your money. I'm like, come <laughs> on! She was married to Ted Turner. She's rich! <laughs> um, I'm not really answering your question because I don't particularly have a favorite and I like a lot of trash. I, I love anything by, uh, I love Jacqueline Suzanne's books. They're so bad. Oh my god, I do too. Oh, really? I got them all. Yeah. And several of, a couple of her biographies. You know, um, also, Jackie Collins, um, some of her earlier stuff, I like that, mm -hmm. where she, like, trash does the send-up of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, things like that. And I love to read mysteries. I read, I read um, Janet Ivanovich, all of hers. So, uh, quite quite a uh, wide range of things. Are you an animal person? I'm not. I, the animals like me. They uh, do. My dog loves you. Yeah, when you yeah. got here today, he was just like, ah, rah, rah, rah. I, I'm not in a position in my life right now where I feel that I could have a pet because I'm not home. I travel a lot. I'm not home. And I don't think it would be fair because it would be like having a child and ignoring them. Yeah. You know? Do you have a mm -hmm. fan page on Facebook? No, I don't. I have a page on Facebook, and anybody that's a fan or wants to be a friend is welcome to just join on there. I don't. I have to be honest, I don't think I've done enough to, to have a fan page. No, I, don't I, I think I need to work more before I, I earn that right. There are people out there that have fan pages that haven't done anything, and I kind of snicker. <laughs> so, so, so come join me on my page. <laughs> we can be friends instead of fans. There you go. Do you like horror films? I do. I love horror films. What's your favorite one? Oh, um, anything from, by Sam Raimi, the Evil Dead series, is, is, is awesome. But I also like the Final Destination series. And, and really? I, yes. Oh, my God, those are hilarious. The only thing I didn't like on Final Destination, and it's probably not worth talking about, but they were talking about how you can see evidence of death in anything, and they showed evidence of 9-11, which I thought was very inappropriate, <gasps> considering. And on television, they, they cut it out. <laughs> wasn't there. And I have a funny story to tell, which isn't related to horror movies, but it is kind of funny. Um, you know the Patsy Cline movie where they crash into a mountain at the end? Uh -huh. Which is how she died, unfortunately. Oh, no. I was on uh, a plane, and that was something, the in-flight movie. So, oh, my God! So, you know, first they come near the mountain, and then they miss it, and then they come near the mountain, and they miss it, and they're like, oh, thank God, then they hit the mountain. Well, they didn't show that right. They just shut the movie off. I'm turning so to they the don't even show like the, at the what happened after that scene? No, nope, they just cut to her singing, and I turned to the person next to me, and I said, you know, there's supposed to be a plane crash here. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a bad idea. It was just, it was a bad idea to show it. Yeah. So. Katie would like to know, do you collect anything? Um, I collect movies. I collect all my favorite movies. I have a lot of classics. I love Betty Davis, Joan Crawford, anything that's film noir. Mm -hmm. um, I also to a limited degree collect old television shows that I think are well done, such as Bewitched. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to buy the new old Christine, because I love that series with Julia Lewis. Oh my god, wasn't that good? I love the guy who played her brother. Oh, he's, he's, in addition to being cute, he's talented. There's just something about him. He's not cute in a traditional way, but that You guys hair. have similar he's hair. Just, you guys have similar hair, Leon. Well, he's also mm -hmm. probably half my age, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, stop. Oh, he's, he's fishing. Leon looks great. Oh. Stop. So Stop. it's about 9.20. We've been on for about an hour now we after have. our glitches. So. How time flies. Um, so anybody, if we missed your question, um, tweet it really fast and we'll wrap this up. Gr Clark Gregg is hot. Clark Gregg, is that an actor? Clark Gregg. Do you mean Clark Gable? Clark Gable. No, don't go. Um, but uh, follow Bruce on Twitter at Bruce Elhart. Thank you, Corey. Oh, right. I, I am on Twitter. I just, I don't, I don't know. I just don't tweet. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Mm. So, yeah. So, uh, uh, do we where do you stand on, uh, okay, well, no, he didn't play Christine. Who played Christine? Oh, he played Christine. He was, yeah.
Clark Gregg is the guy who played Christine's ex husband. You know, I have a theory. He just. I know my gaydar doesn't work in LA. But it kind of goes off. Oh, Clark Gregg. Oh, yes. He was. He is brilliant. In fact, I just watched the rerun today. They have a funny episode in there, and I have to do this very quickly because we're out of time, but where they're always pushing the envelope on the new old Christine, mm. where she keeps dreaming about having sex with people like her brother. Uh-huh. And there's at the end, they do this funny little thing where her, the guy who plays her ex-husband, Clark Gregg, dreams he's making out with her brother. Uh-huh. And it, obviously, they really had to do it for, for the show. And it's just, I, I love the acceptance of actors that are willing to cross the line. Yeah, and I love too. the fact that that show crosses the line and probably pisses off everybody. Isn't that great? That is great. It makes what? me crazy when yeah. I've auditioned or talked to actors who... And you know a couple of them, and we won't name names, who will <laughs> just get freaked out by the gay thing. <laughs> God, gay? We've been around forever. It's kind of boring, actually. People will play Hitler, but they don't want to play gay. You know, I'm they'll telling play you, serial you know? killer, but they don't want to... Mm, go figure. Mm. Um, do you watch The Voice or X Factor? No. I don't actually watch reality shows, and I don't watch those shows. Um, and I'm not criticizing them. They're just not for me. Yeah, same here. Yeah. So, there are too many of them now. This today was it in today's times. <gasps> the TV section said X Factor and The Voice and yeah. America Has Talent. All are all. It's like, do we really need three? And how can you say one person is better than the other by a panel of people that are singing to auto tune anyway? You know, <laughs> and, and, and recording by syllables. You know, half these people aren't even really performers, in my opinion. What's your favorite food? Oh God, I have so many. But I always say that, right? If it's alcohol, I love vodka. Uh, if it's dessert, I like cookies. And unfortunately, I share that with Nancy Reagan. I know that's not cool, but for, for, for a birthday, I would rather have a plate of cookies with some candles stuck in it than a cake. Mm. I think Jane, or, um, Nancy Reagan's going to be popular again. Now that Jane Fonda's going to be playing her. Have you seen a picture of Jane Fonda Nancy no, Reagan? I mean, oh my God, it's how did I miss creepy. This? Well, you know, Nancy Reagan was much more of a moderate than um, some of the conservatives we see today, you know? Yeah. And she certainly was, was pro-gay. And she's... So. Pro-gay. Stem cell research.